Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Southern Four Wheel Drive Association's TechNet. Tonight, we've got two speakers. Jay Bird, Southern Four Wheel Drive Association president, is going to talk to us about some Southern business. And then we're going to switch over to Michael Morrison, who's going to talk to us about our sponsors. And then Mike's going to tell us all about spotting and hand signals, some of the techniques you use when you're out spotting for someone on the trail and a common set of hand signals, if we can all get a common set of hand signals. So Jay, if you would, why don't you just uh, jump right in here and tell us about Trail Fest? And Absolutely, welcome everybody. I, I love these tech nets. I think they're, they're so great. I always learn something uh, wonderful from, from the tech nets, but I'm here to talk about Trail Fest. So you see the logo on the screen right there. And um, Trail Fest 2021 is going to happen April 30th to May 2nd, and it's going to be at Adventure Off-Road Park, or AOP, up in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. And, and tonight's all about spotting, and if we can figure out, okay, do you do this, or do you do this, do you do this, do you drive her up, we, drive her down? Gonna, we've got Mike on the screen now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to Mike now, and we're going to let Mike tell us a little bit about our sponsors. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in there and help Mike with the, uh, the weekly giveaways, and then what Mike can then talk about the grand prize again before he starts talking about uh, spotting techniques and hand signals <laughs> or something. I, right, Jay? And uh, hello, Mike. Hey, how's it going? We're, we're doing good. You want to you wanna tell us a little bit about our sponsors? and. Yeah, so um, huge thanks to BF Goodrich Tires, right? So they have um, given us the set of tires to give away with these tech nets, right? So what we are planning on doing, for those of you that are kind of new to the tech nets, it is five tires, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, a full set of tires up to 37 inches, can be KM3s or KO2s, and uh what you have to do is watch these tech nets live, right? Everyone that you watch live and you follow Al's directions when he tells you what to comment down in the comments, every time you do that, you are entered. Your name is entered for a chance to win those tires. And the drawing will be held at Trail Fest, right? So we're going to hold that drawing at Trail Fest and you do not have to be present to win. So again, huge shout out. Last season, they gave us a set of tires for this tech net. This season, they were ready to jump right on board again. Also, huge shout out to Warren, who's given us um, a lot of the giveaway items, right? They've given us a lot of the giveaway, the weekly giveaway items from grab handles to recovery equipment, both last season and this season. And um, also, huge shout out to Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center, who has hosted several of these tech nets now, including our latest one that was with SunX Tools. So make sure that you guys like, share, go to their Facebook pages, type up a message to them and say, hey, thanks for supporting Southern Four Wheel Drive Association and their continuing education. Hey, Mike, uh, Chuck, Chuck is actually online tonight, and I think he won uh, oh. life, life season. So, uh, so see, it really, it really does happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop off the screen now and just turn it over to you to tell us all, all you know about spotting hand signals. I got a few graphics that shows the different hand signals. So I'll overlay those if I hear you mention that particular hand signal as we go. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All, all yours, sir. Thank you very much, Al. All right. So we're going to talk about spotting, right? Um, and a lot of people like to spot. It's, it is a fun thing to do. Um, you know, you're you're helping beginners get over an obstacle or you're on an advanced obstacle and even an advanced driver is able to make it over it because of good spotting. Um, but spotting is very, very much an art form. So as we go through this class, guys, um, I can't see your comments. So make sure that or questions. So make sure that you preface any questions you have with a cue. That way, um, at the end of the live stream, we will address those questions um, and bring those up. But um, I really enjoy kind of the spotting class um, because I believe that the best drivers that I know started out spotting, 
right? They've spent more time spotting and it's made them a better driver because they've seen how different vehicles react off road on different types of terrain. Um, and it really shows through their spotting. They're able to take that skill inside the vehicle with them. So a good spotter or a great spotter is going to be a really good or a great driver. Um, so let's talk a little bit about spotting. Um, and, and before we get into hand signals, I want to talk a little bit about, first off, the safety aspect of it. Where should you as a spotter place yourself, right? And where do you want to stand when you're a spotter? I see a lot of people when they first start spotting and they're very close to the vehicle or they are very close to the driver's side window trying to, to speak to the driver while the driver is driving. And um, sometimes I even see them and, you know, they're five to 10 feet in front of the vehicle. What we are doing at that point in time is, is two things. One, we're placing ourselves in danger, right? Because we're right up in front of the vehicle. And if the vehicle loses control or the driver has to gain a little momentum, they can possibly hit us or run us over. Even if we're just right next to the vehicle, um, very close to it, the vehicle could pitch one way or the other and it could, again, roll on top of us. And so when we're thinking about where to place ourselves on the trail, I typically will try to get as far away down the trail as I can where the driver can still see me clearly. I can be in the middle of the trail if I'm far enough away, you know, 30 or 40 feet away, um, even more. Or I can be off to the side of the trail. Two things are important for me as a spotter. Number one, the driver has to be able to see me clearly through the entire obstacle, right? Number two, I need to be able to see the rear tires of the vehicle as clear as possible. Maybe not both of them, maybe just one, but I do need to be able to see the rear tires of that vehicle as much as possible. So I try to place myself kind of diagonal off the vehicle. Normally, I'll really pay attention to the A pillar so that that doesn't block me from the driver's vision or the driver's not having to lean their head one way or the other to see me because I want the driver to be comfortable. But if we crowd the driver, the other thing that that does is make the driver nervous, right? Because now they have to worry about our safety as well as their vehicle safety, right? They're concerned about accidentally hitting us. Um, so they tend to get more nervous the closer we are. And one of our jobs as a spotter is to keep that driver comfortable. So place yourself down the trail. I normally will try to get far enough down the trail where I can see the entire obstacle, right? And I can also um, spot them through the entire obstacle because nothing's worse than, than being a driver and someone's telling me to come forward and I drive forward a little bit and I make it three or four feet, then the spotter has to move. So I have to stop and then he'll have me restart again. And they do this over and over and over. And what it does is it breaks that concentration of the driver or it breaks that momentum of the vehicle every time that I need to come through. So that's about placing ourselves, right? The other thing, again, is making sure we have good footing. Um, you know, if it's slippery terrain on a hill, we want to make sure that we're not going to slide down in front of the vehicle because sometimes the driver may be focused on something else and now we've slid into the trail in their way. So make sure you do have good footing. The next thing that I want to talk about is how we communicate with the driver, right? And I heard kind of um, Jay and Al talking about, you know, left-hand drive versus right-hand drive vehicles and things like that. But what I teach in my spotting class is no verbal cues, right? I'm not going to talk to that driver at all. If I do, for whatever reason, need to talk to the driver, maybe it's a little bit of instruction, maybe it's talking through the plan that we have going on, then what I will do is I will stop the vehicle and I will walk to it, right? And talk to them through their driver's window to talk through the plan. Um, or if I have to calm them down, then I'll talk through that with them. And that's perfectly okay. But I want you to remember that once that driver starts moving that vehicle and they have a few RPMs or the vehicle is bouncing around, who knows, maybe they even have a dog or a kid or somebody inside the vehicle that's kind of freaking out and people are talking around them. But woe and go sound the same. Woe and no sound the same or no and go sound the same. And it's really hard for them to hear what we're saying while we're yelling at them. Also, if, 
if it's a new driver or it's a really tough obstacle, they can start getting some adrenaline pumping and then they start to kind of lose their fine motor skills and some of the, their processing power and us talking, they can misinterpret what we're saying. Also, if I'm looking at someone and I say turn left, well, my left is this way, but the driver's left is the complete opposite, right? Because it's a mirror image, basically. So I don't use left, right, right hand down, left hand down, or even driver or passenger, okay? I use 110% hand signals, right? So another reason I don't use my voice is because my voice can betray maybe what I'm thinking, right? If I start yelling and screaming at the driver, then that could get the driver scared or concerned. I always, the number one thing that I do when I'm spotting is I smile, right? I smile, even if maybe we're potentially getting into a bad situation. I want that driver to be comfortable, 110% comfortable in that vehicle. If I have a concern, I don't want the driver to share that same concern get some adrenaline pumping and make a mistake. So I smile the entire time that I'm spotting them rather than letting my voice betray maybe what I'm thinking in the back of my brain. So I also use big hand signals, really big hand signals. And you can do a lot with hand signals as far as communication, right? But what I see a lot of is people get on the trail and they'll say, hey, turn this way, turn this way turn this way, turn this way, right? And this, especially if you're wearing gloves that match your shirt, is really hard to see. Or it's nighttime, it's really hard to see. So what I typically teach and what I do is big hand signals, right? Maybe it's a come forward, right? Come forward with big open palms facing towards me, bringing them forward. And it's nice and easy. If I need more from them, I'll ask for it, right? If they're not giving me enough momentum, then I'll emphasize it more. I'll say, come forward, come forward, come forward, right? You know, so using big hand movements allows them to see it from a further distance away, okay? And very concise hand movements, right? I see a lot of people, they'll put their hands like this, you know, and they'll say, okay, straighten your tires up. Well, the driver may not know what's straight on his tires, right? Without leaning their head outside the vehicle, we want to keep their head outside the vehicle. So I turn them in the direction that I want them to turn to straighten out their tires. So that's how I communicate. And I think that's one of the most important things uh, when we are spotting a vehicle is that we don't use verbal cues. We use hand signals, right? Only time we get verbal is if we have to go to the vehicle and talk to the driver directly. And then we're going to stop that vehicle and go to them and talk to them. All right. Number kind of the third thing about spotting a vehicle. And this is probably the most common mistake for drivers and spotters. Those of you that have watched some of our older tech nets about driving obstacles and things like that, choosing a line. You've heard me say drive the rear of the vehicle or drive chest back on the vehicle. What I want you to do as a spotter is spot the rear of that vehicle, okay? Because remember, that front, we can turn and move the front of that vehicle wherever we need to move it around very easily. But that rear is following a set path, right? Once it's going to follow that front end on its own path, right? So if we're turning, remember, it's a different path than the front. It's a tighter turning radius. So we spot the rear of the vehicle. That's why I said position yourself to where you'll see the rear of the vehicle, because that's what we're going to spot the most. OK, so along with that, identify the vehicle that you are spotting. I've seen a ton of really great spotters, right, that grew up in the Jeep world. They shift over and try to spot Toyotas that are independent front suspension, and they struggle because they haven't identified the type of vehicle that they're spotting. They haven't taken the time to really understand what the capabilities of that vehicle is, right? You can't do the same things with a solid axle that you can with an IFS, just like you can't do the same things with an IFS that you can with a solid axle. So make sure you identify the vehicle that you're spotting, how long it is, right? The approach angle, the breakover angle, and the departure angle. 
these are all really important things to know, especially if you're guiding a trail ride of different vehicles, different vehicle types, or vehicles that are even modified differently, because they cannot take the same line. And I'll see a lot of spotters in, in a lot of times that are guiding trail rides, and they will spot every vehicle over the same path. And when they get to vehicles that maybe are slightly different than the other ones, um, maybe it's a, a two-door Jeep versus a four-door Jeep or a four-door Jeep versus a Toyota 4Runner. And they make a mistake and that vehicle gets stuck because they didn't correctly identify the vehicle that they were spotting and how that correlates to what they're to their line, right? They just think they picked a good line and they continue on. So that's that's spotting the rear of the vehicle and understanding and identifying the vehicle that you are spotting, super important. All right, let's get into hand signals. I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit to give myself some room. There we go. All right, so hopefully you guys can hear me nice and clear, but hand signals, I think are super important. These are the hand signals that I use. Um, it's kind of standard across most of the four wheel drive trainer market um, because now we can work with any trainer and understand our hand signals. But the most important thing for you guys to do is develop a clear, concise set of hand signals and make sure that you and the driver of the vehicle understand those hand signals. It doesn't do you any good to be doing all this, right? and the driver doesn't even know what you're saying with your hands. So in the driver's meeting, before you even take off on your trail ride, if you are a guide or a spotter, go over those hand signals, right? Go over, make sure everybody understands what those are. And I'm gonna show you what, what we as kind of four wheel drive trainers mostly use. Um, and I'm gonna get pretty in depth because I have some hand signals that help out in some of the different aspects. But first and foremost, Big open palms come forward, right? I don't, you know, hey, come here, come here. I don't do that. It's always big open palms towards me telling him to come forward, all right? Open palms away from me or pointing away, I can say back up or point back, back up, right? Back up. And again, if I need more momentum, then I'll tell him, I'll say, come forward. Faster hand movements, more emphasize, will let them know that I need to come forward. The next one is turn, right? I, and again, not this pointing mess, but big open hand to the side where you can see that open palm flat to them. And I'll do it slow, okay? So I've got turn, come forward and turn, or stop and turn, or even back up and turn. Right. So this is a little bit of that rub your belly, pat your head. Your hands are doing two different things. So turn this way, turn this way. When I do my driver's meetings, this is something that I express very much as a driver. Small steering wheel inputs. If I want you to turn more, I will ask for it. Right. So if I'm telling you to turn and you're not turning, I'll emphasize it more. Right. Maybe even you can't see my feet now, but if I'm not getting enough turning out of them, I'll stomp my foot in the direction that I want them to turn. Again, emphasizing like a mime, right? Emphasizing what I want them to do. And I can tell them to stop again, stop and turn, come forward and turn or back up and turn. So super important to kind of go through those steps. Now, the next set of signals I think are, are two of the most important signals, right? Stop, meaning just stop the vehicle, stop exactly where you're at. Maybe you get them to the top of a rock and you want to stop them there, so you stop. That's super important, but this next one is a little bit different. If I cross my hands in two fists, that means stop and lock the vehicle down, shut it down, right? Shut the vehicle down. Maybe we're seeing something like fluid coming out or you're in a precarious position. I want you to stop that vehicle and shut it down. So hands together and uh, X in a fist like this is stop and shut it down. Like this is just stop the vehicle, right? Just stop where you're at. So the next one is I use this a lot of times in helping people make a 
visual image in their mind of what their vehicle is doing. And what I will do is, is I will point to a tire, right? I will point to a tire and I will tell them, hey, you're coming up, coming up, coming up. You're on the top or move my hand down here. You're coming down, you're coming down, you're coming down, you're off the obstacle, right? So I can communicate that to them as they're moving through. So, hey, you're climbing this rock to the top, to the top. You're on the top of the rock. Oh, you're coming off the rock, coming off the rock, coming off the rock. You're off the rock, right? So that way, if they're worried about how high they're climbing up, now they have some type of measurement, right? They can at least see your hands and how close they're getting together to let them know, hey, we're not just taking them up this rock until they flip over. Right. There is an end in sight, but it helps them correlate and build a mental image with what they're doing. And when you point to one side or other of the vehicle, they will be able to tell which tires you're pointing at. Right. Maybe not front to back, but they'll be able to tell whether it's on the left side of the vehicle or the right side of the vehicle. So I will do that and try to communicate what I'm working their way through. All right. So the next ones are a lot of times dictating whether or not I need um, them to use some of the vehicle mechanisms that are in place or technology that's in place. The first one is if I do pointing towards an open palm, this is turn on the rear locker if applicable, right? If I do two fingers pointing at each other, right? I make the little gun with my hand and I point them towards each other. This is front rear locker if applicable, right? And if I do either this where I pull it apart or I do this where I pull it apart, that's lockers off, right? Lockers off. And those of you that know me know I will tell you very, very quickly, turn those lockers off, right? Turn those lockers off. Let's get you through this obstacle with a little bit of, a little bit of driving skill, right? I'm not a big fan of lockers, but there are times to use them. And that's why I'll do the rear locker front rear locker or lockers off, lock, rear locker off. So that's how I will communicate turning those on and off. And again, this is if applicable, right? Identifying the vehicle and understanding if they have lockers. The next one is a little bit different and I'm gonna show it a little bit closer here, but I basically make two peace signs here and I cross them, right? And I cross them like that. This is traction control or I will use this to identify hill descent control. But if I do this right here, then I want that traction control turned on. If I do this and pull them apart, then I want the trash control turned off. Because there are times where trash control is going to hurt you more than it can help you in situations like ice, right? Or really slippery terrain, trash control can hurt you. So I will tell people, hey, trash control on or trash control off. Okay. Now, Gear selection of the vehicle. Those of you that have watched some of our tech nets know that manual transmissions, we can choose a gear. But I also say with automatic transmissions, drive it like a manual. Choose your gear. So I will tell people if I need them to choose a higher gear. So I'll point up. This is for first gear, right? Second gear, third gear, and so forth, right? If I point down, this may be four-wheel drive low range right? Or four-wheel drive high range. So if I wanted them to switch between four-wheel drive high range, I may even do this, right? Identify four high, first gear, second gear, or third gear, or four low, right? First gear, second gear, third gear. So that just identifies what gear, if we're doing a hill climb, maybe they need to use second gear to climb this hill, but I need them in four low. So I'll tell them four low, second gear to climb this hill. So that's how I'll communicate with getting them to choose a gear for a specific hill climb. If I'm guiding and we pull out on a gravel road, I may tell them four high, right? And even if I'm in the vehicle, right? Maybe I'm just in the lead vehicle. I can put my hand out the door to the side, out the driver's side, and I can wiggle those four fingers up. If I need them all in four high and they can relay that down the down the group, right? Then the next person sticks their hand out. The next person sticks their hand out. So we know to go to four high or four low if we're in a position where now we're going to get on a technical terrain. 
So even without radios, we can communicate that. Even if I have a radio, a lot of times you'll still see me stick my hand out the window just to make sure everybody sees it. And I make sure everybody relays that back. All right. Now, so that's my spotting, right, for driving, right? But I'm a, spotting isn't just hand signals during driving. Spotting is also hand signals during recovery. So this is very, very important. And these are different hand signals than just the standard spotting. So let's talk about those. And the same things apply, right? Where you're going to try to stand. Again, you want to be in visual range of the driver. But you also now want to be able to see the entire recovery. But you want to put yourself in a safe place. So make sure that. But if you have more than one vehicle involved in the recovery, maybe you're doing a kinetic or a dynamic recovery where it's vehicle to vehicle extraction, right? And you're using a kinetic rope or a kinetic strap. Now both drivers have to be able to see you clearly. Okay. So this is super important about where you stand. Make sure that you fit that criteria, right? All drivers can see you and see the hand signals you're making, but you can also see the entire recovery in a safe place, not hiding behind a tree and reaching your hands around, right? So make sure that you are in a safe place, but you have to be visible. All right, if you are winching, okay, then one finger in the air, do the lasso, right? This is winch in, all right? And think about put it in the helicopter. If I point one finger down, do the lasso. This is winch out. I call this the duck quack, right? Put your hand to the side and quack like a duck. That is one bump of the trigger in. If I do it down, that's one bump of the trigger out. Okay. So if you are hooking up a recovery and I do hands above my head, clap together, that is connected, right? If I pull my hands apart above my hand, head, that is disconnected, meaning we have disconnected this recovery. It is no longer live, right? But once it is live, meaning that line can go tight at any time, it's connected, that's hands together above my head. And that is one time when I will use verbal cues because a lot of times we have people outside the vehicle looking, wanting to see what's going on, and that's a verbal cue now this recovery can go tight and it is dangerous. And I will say connected, loud parade deck voice or disconnected to let everybody know. And I yell it nice and loud, right? And sometimes some of the people that go on trail rides with me, they'll repeat it just so that everybody knows. So with that, sometimes we have to give driving instruction and winch instruction, right? So how we do that is if I'm telling you to winch in right here, I may tell you to come forward or I may tell you to turn one direction or turn the other direction, right? So I can even switch hands and I can do this and tell you to turn over here. I can be telling you to come forward while telling you to winch in or I can tell you to stop and winch a little bit to take the slack out. Now come forward. It's really hard, right? Because again, you're rubbing your belly and patting your head to do the two hand method. So it takes a little practice. The most important thing to remember is at any point in time, you can say stop and you can re kind of resituate yourself as a spotter, right? If I've got a driver that's winching and I'm trying to tell him to drive forward and do this, but I start to get a little maybe confused with my hand signals, then I stop. OK, I'll say stop and I may have them winch in a little bit to take the slack out. Now I'll tell them to start driving again. But any point in time, you can tell them to stop. You can resituate your hands and you can start again. All right. One last uh, hand signal for recovery that is very, very important. If I come to the front of your vehicle and this is for winching or if I come to the front of your vehicle to make a connection for a kinetic recovery, I'm going to do this, right? This means either I'm going in your winch to redress it with my hands or I'm kneeling down in front of your vehicle to make connections. What I want to see at this point in time is I want to see the driver's hands up in the air, not holding the winch remote in their hand. 
um, or not holding on to the steering wheel in gear, right? I want to see that vehicle in park um, so that I know that I can safely work on that winch. They're not accidentally going to touch the control or I can safely kneel down in front of that vehicle to make a connection. Okay. So that big one of doing the bunny hop, as I call it, going to the front of the vehicle is primarily to get the driver's attention to let them know I'm there, right? So that's a super important one. And when I do that, I want to make eye contact with the driver, right? Make eye contact with the driver so that they understand and we have that visual connection that I'm going down, okay? All right. So those are most of the hand signals that I use kind of in classes and on guided trail rides and stuff. Again, you don't have to use all of the same hand signals that I do, but the most important thing is, is that the group that you are spotting understands those hand signals. So now let's go into a little bit about, and this, this is the last thing before we go into, into questions, but let's go into a little bit about kind of the psychology of spotting. And again, this is kind of what I see with people just getting into spotting these mistakes. But you have to realize, right, that it takes a certain amount of time for a driver to receive your hand signals, process that, and put it out through their hands and feet, right? And the newer the driver or the less experienced the driver, the longer that process takes. So as a spotter, it's super important for you to do two things. Number one is you need to have your plan or your line that you're going to drive that vehicle in place. Your plan is ready to go because if you're making it up as you go, as far as where you're going to position this vehicle on the trail, it's going to be too late by the time you start making the hand signals for them to process it and put it into actual driving okay so as a spotter we have that plan the next thing that's super important to understand is and just to give you an idea of this is if i give you hand signals right if i'm saying come forward and i start to tell you to turn from the second i start to tell you to turn number one i have to process it with my brain and tell my hand to do it so we have you know a quarter of a second delay then your eyes have to, the driver's eyes have to receive it, process it through their brain, and then send it out through their hands and feet, which could take anywhere from half a second to a full second, right? So we could be anywhere from a second to a half a second or three quarters of a second delay before they start making those changes. Then they have to go through making those changes. So as a spotter, it's important for us to always be a step ahead. If you'll notice when I am spotting, I'll actually tell them to start turning almost a full second and a half to two seconds before I actually need them to turn, right? That way they have time to process that, especially if they're carrying a little momentum through an obstacle, right? Maybe they're bumping the vehicle up on a ledge or making a hill climb, but I'm giving them those hand signals early so that they have time to process it. And again, with the psychological aspect, remember to smile. Because when a driver gets scared and their adrenaline starts pumping or their testosterone starts pumping, right, we are getting excited. Number one thing that happens is we're losing our fine motor skills. We're also losing some of our processing capacity because we're kind of in that fight or flight mode. This is when you see drivers a lot of times they get in a bad situation and they floor it because now they can't feather that throttle because they only know on and off, right? On and off that throttle. So I'm smiling, calm hand movements to let them know what I'm what I want from them, right? Over here. If I need more, then I'm asking for it, right? I'm asking for it. But I'm keeping them calm with a nice big smile on my face and bringing them through. So that's why that's where it really becomes super important, right? that we're looking happy, we're enjoying what we're doing, and we are guiding them through the trail ride. Any of you that have ever been, some of the some of the best trail guides out there are Jeep Jamboree trail guides because they really like, especially some of the big ones like up at Penn Woods in Pennsylvania, they've had the same trail rides, trail guides for years, and they've done it. And you'll see them. They are 
happy and smiling regardless of the situation. Somebody's stuck. They are smiling, making those connections and giving hand signals the whole time. And the people enjoy that. They feel comfortable with that spotter. So that's one of the most important things. When I see a spotter start to wince or, you know, start to look like something's going wrong, I start to get concerned because now I know that that driver is feeling the same thing, right? Even if that driver's scraping a skid plate or differential on a rock a little bit, I'm still going to smile because now I just need to stop them and back them up and have them turn a little bit one direction or the other. So keep those things in mind about kind of the psychological aspect of spotting. Remember that delay, right? Remember that delay. Have your plan in place that you've picked and spot them through that plan, giving them opportunity to do what they need to do, right? Don't wait until they're on that rock to tell them to start turning because now it's too late, right? All right, guys, that is an introduction to spotting. I'm going to bring Al on now and let him bring up any questions that we have, and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Hey, Mike, we had uh, we only had one question. I'm going I'm to put it up on the screen so everybody can see it. And they want to know if these hand signals are standard hand signals. So there's a lot to remember there. There, there is a lot to remember. I wouldn't say necessarily that they're standard hand signals. Kind of. So the association that I'm certified through the International Four Wheel Drive Trainers Association, they're pretty standard for us. Um, I do know that there's a lot of guys outside of that association that use these hand signals, um, especially the recovery ones, because they're actually from the overhead lifting industry with working with trains and um, rigging type things. So they are kind of sort of standard, but you'll see people, they have all kinds of different hand signals. To, the two most important thing is whatever your hand signals are is big hand signals, right? So people can see it and uh, making sure that the group that you're guiding understands those hand signals. Um, because if I start telling you, if I, if I lead a trail ride and I tell you to turn on your rear locker, but I've never taught you what this means, you're never going to know to turn on your rear locker. You're just going to look at me and say, what's he doing pointing at his hand? Am I about to hit a rock? Okay, I got a comment there too, a serious comment. And me as the driver, Mike, if I, if I see you doing this, get it on camera here, and I don't understand that, I'm going to stop. Either, either stop this way or stop this way, depending on the situation, you know, and then get you to explain it to me or whoever my spotter is to explain or assess it myself. One, one kind of um, pro tip that I use, and I, I don't normally share this one because um, it's uh -oh. kind of my, my trainer tip, right? Um, but what I will tell people in when I'm doing my driver's meeting, I will tell them, I will say, hey, if you are ever not comfortable or you don't understand my hand signals, right? Flash your lights at me. Just high beam, low beam, flash your lights at me and I'll come to the door and we'll talk through it, right? And that's just a, you know, that way they're not sticking their head out the window or they're sitting there waiting on me to come up. But I will, I will tell in a driver's meeting, hey, flash your lights at me so that I can come around and, um, uh, talk to you through the driver's window. Right. Okay. All right. Everybody, Thanks see you later. Bye, guys. Bye.